when did you last see Dia? The day she disappeared. When was that? June 6th, 2020. What time of day was it when you saw her last? The last I saw her was approximately 2.20, 2.30 when I had lunch with her. Where were you when you had lunch? At the house. Was anyone else present? No. Do you know what Dia's plans were for the rest of the day that day? He talked about going down and raining the horses. Where was that going to take place? Toolbox. How far is that toolbox property away from the residence? Five, approximately five miles. She told you she was going to go to that property to do something with the horses? Correct. Which the idea was that she would go alone, is that right? Correct. What was your plan for the rest of that day? I was mowing the meadow. On what property? The residence. Based on the normal flow of your days with Dia around that time, when did you anticipate you would see her next that day? Her supper. Back at the house? Yeah. So did you finish mowing, do some other stuff, and then go back to the house for supper? I went back at approximately... I was leaving for Colorado the next day, and Dia was going to go with me, and uh, and uh, I came into the house at approximately 7.30 after having completed the uh, meadow. So did it take you, well, let me withdraw that. So you had lunch with Dia around 2.30, right? Correct. Did you finish the lunch around 2.30 or start it? We started at 2, finished right around 2.30. After you finished the lunch, where did you go next? To the meadow to complete the mowing. And then did you stay on the property for that next five hours completing yeah. the mowing? Yeah. You never left the property at all? Never. And then after you were done mowing the meadow, you went back to the house around 7.30, true? Correct. You expected that Dia would be there by then? Of course. What did you do next after you realized she was not there? I called her cell phone. Did you see anyone else on the property when you were mowing the meadow that afternoon into evening? Nope. Did you talk to anyone during that roughly five hour time window? No. When you called via cell phone, did it ring? Yeah. It didn't like go straight to voicemail as far as you can recall? No, I could hear it ringing upstairs. The phone was in the house? Yeah. What'd you do next? I went upstairs to check to see if she was there. And found the phone up there? Yeah. Did you find any of her other personal items upstairs? Yeah, there's all kinds of personal items upstairs. Around her phone? 
No, it's just it was plugged in next to the bed stand. Plugged into the charger? Yep. When she left the property to go to toolbox, she would have taken a vehicle, right? Correct. Did she actually take a vehicle? No, she did not. It was parked out back. We parked it out there because Clinton was threatening to come and take it. We're talking about a truck, is that right? Yep. What kind of truck? What's that? What kind of truck? It was a Ford 2006. I think F three fifty. So it was your expectation that when Dia was going to go to the toolbox property, she would have taken that Ford truck. True. It was the only transportation she had. So it was surprising to you to discover that the truck was still there. I imagine. Exactly. Do you know if she ever left the property to go to toolbox that day? No, she did not. What makes you say she did not? Because I would have noticed the truck uh, leaving the property. So even though you were mowing the meadow, based on the way the property is configured, you would have seen the truck go by if she had left? Yes. And you never saw the truck go by? No. So in your mind, there's really no chance that she left the residence, went to Toolbox, and came back? No, she right? never did. She never left the residence. When did you first realize that the truck was still there? After I had checked the phone and the house and could not find her. So after you found the phone upstairs, did you start looking around for Dia? Yes, I did. So you would have searched the entire inside of the house, right? Yes, plus all the properties outside. So you then went outside and searched outside as well? Exactly. When you didn't find Dio, what did you do next? Um, she had a highway patrolman um, that was living at Toolbox. He had just shortly moved to another location. Anyway, I had talked with him and he said, well, they're not going to do anything for almost three days because of the fact that uh, that's their rule. And I wasn't sure that. Uh, I'm not I, I wasn't sure where she was, so I was more concerned about searching the properties making sure that she wasn't trapped in a storage box or some other location. And it takes a while to search that property because there's a lot of structures on the property. Who was that highway patrolman? I can't remember his name. Was that the first person that you called after you had been searching for Dia? Correct. You called that person because he would have been familiar with how no, I, I was just concerned if there had been any medical uh, reports or anything, and he indicated that he had heard of anything, and uh, he also informed me it would be a while before they would actually consider her missing. So the, pur the purpose for your call to this highway patrolman was to find out if based on intel that he had, whether someone had reported some sort of medical emergency? Yeah. And he told you, well, it sounds like you then had a conversation about the situation that Dia was missing, true? It's basically, I didn't know where she was. I did not know she was missing at the time. I was just concerned that there may have been a medical condition that I may have missed. And he told you during that call that if she was missing, the authorities wouldn't start searching for three days. Is that right? Correct. Did 
did you make any other phone calls that evening or that night? We started making phone calls to people, not that night, but in the next morning, we started making phone calls to neighbors and people that knew her and started organizing a search of the branch. Did you call, so let's just focus on that night for a moment. Is the only phone call that you placed that night to, was that to the highway patrolman? I believe so. So was your hope at that time that Dia would just reappear and by the next morning, everything would be back to normal. Is that right? Yeah. So did you then sleep at the property that night? I did. That morning, she was not back, true? And I went back. I, I then drove down to Toolbox, making sure that she hadn't left with a, a friend of hers or something and, and stayed down to that property. And I checked that property. Then I went over to the highway patrolman and notified him that she had not come home that night. And he said, well, then I would call the sheriff's office and at least put them on notice. Did you call the sheriff's office at that time? Yes, I did. Did they tell you they were going to take any action? They said they wouldn't take any action for three days because most people return in that period of time. Did you express any frustration to them? Well, sure. Absolutely. So it sounds like you drove to the toolbox property. Did, did you drive to any of these other properties? No. She, How many properties? She talked, she... she talked only about going to toolbox. I thought maybe Julia or somebody had picked her up and transferred her down there. And because she had forgotten her phone, maybe she obviously uh, wasn't able to respond. So I went and checked that property out before I called the sheriff's office. Did Dia own any other properties in the area at that time? Uh, yeah. Who were those properties? Sky High. Is that the only other one? Yep. Why didn't you go to that one? Because she wouldn't have gone there. had horses down to the other property and would have had reason to go down there. Horses at the toolbox property? Correct. But not at Sky High? No. Okay, so the sheriff tells you nothing's going to happen for three days. It sounds like you then started organizing your own search party. Is that right? We did, uh, we did three days of search of the property. When you say we, who are you referring to? Friends and relatives are not, well, Clinton was involved. He eventually got there. Uh, there was, uh, she had a list of people who she played uh, a game called Bunko. They had phone numbers attached. We called all those. We called uh, Pine Springs Ranch. They brought all their staff over we called the Zen Center that knew her. They brought all their staff. We had approximately, I would say, 23 to 27 people that we did the search of the properties for three days. Was Diana Fetter included within those people? Yes. She was on the bunko list. I'd met Diane Fetter on Memorial Day. Uh, during the cell that she had with Dia. That was the first time I had met her. Memorial Day 2020? Yep. Did anyone stay with you at the property that Saturday night, June 6? I don't think anybody stayed until the next day. And I asked, because of the amount of search and, and coordination, I asked Diane to stay on the property. And uh, because we were starting the search early the next morning. But that did was you ask, the second day she was disappeared. Did you ask anyone else to stay on the property that 
No. No. Why is it that you asked Diane to stay there? Because she was organizing, she was in charge of the organization of the search, and I felt it was necessary for her to be there. Where did she live at the time? She lived um, over by the toolbox property. Where did Ms. Fetter sleep that night when she stayed over at the property? She stayed at one of the, I think she stayed at the trapper's cabin, but I don't remember. There was a lot of shit going on. This is one of the other, so earlier you said at that property, there were approximately five residences, I think you said? Yeah. So was the trapper's cabin one of those five? So Ms. Fetter did not stay in the same structure where you stayed that night, correct? Absolutely not. Going back to your last conversation with Dia, that lunch that you had, anything unusual come up during that conversation that sticks she, out in your mind? She indicated that she wanted to talk to me, that she had a matter of concern that she wanted to make me aware of. And I told her that we were leaving for Colorado the next day. And I said, if it can be held till I finish the meadow, because it's going to take me till dark to finish the meadow, that uh, if we could talk or we would have all the next day to talk as we traveled. So she told you she had a matter of concern to discuss, but she did not identify what that matter was? No. You asked her to hold that matter of concern until later? Correct. Approximately how long was your lunch with Dia that day? Half hour. Do you recall anything else you discussed during that lunch? No. Did she give you some indication that that matter of concern would have taken longer than 30 minutes to discuss? No, she, she had discussed that she was concerned that Clinton had uh, had issued a uh, she was fearful that Clinton would be was involved in a situation that would take her life or make her disappear. That's a part of the reason we were going to Colorado to displace her, to give her a better living situation where she would not have to worry. Did she tell you what caused her to worry about Clinton? She had told six of her friends that uh, she believed that, that Clinton had issued a order for her extermination. An order to whom? To whoever he would trust. I don't know. I'm not on Clinton's person. Who are those six friends? Uh, Jay, Julie, Diane Fetter, uh, Julia, um, there was a person that was buying uh, that had uh, put a uh, uh, an intent to buy her toolbox property. Uh, she had mentioned to her that she thought Clinton would be involved in her disappearance. And if she disappeared, it would be Clinton who did it. And uh, there were some other friends on, on her bunko list, and I don't remember their names offhand. So Dia told you that she had communicated to six of her friends yeah. that, Clint, that Clinton had issued some sort of order, right? Well, concern that he had issued an order. I'm not saying he had. I'm saying concern that he had issued an order for her disappearance. Did you hear her tell that information to any of her friends? Yes. Who, who did you hear her say that to? 
She said it to Julie. She said it to Ju uh, Julia. Uh, I heard her tell Jack that she had concerns for his dis her disappearance. Okay, you were present when Dia told Julie that she had concerns about I her, her disappearance. I heard her talking on the phone to Julie and Julia. Okay, let's do one at a time. So you heard her, you heard Dia talking on the phone to Julie about a concern of her disappearance that was associated with Clinton. Is that in true? The last two, in the last two to three weeks of her life, she was on high note that there was things underway. <laughs> Just trying to confirm some of this information. So I think I heard you say you heard Dia on the phone with Julie. And that in that conversation, Dia said something about you know, being I, there has been several conversations with Julia. Julia was over all the time. Whether that happened on a phone conversation, I think it was, I heard her on the phone with Julie saying that he felt threatened by Clinton. You uh, heard Dia, okay. You heard Dia say that to Julie. I believe that's correct, yeah. Did you also hear? A lot of things have passed into the water by then, when, where, but I know of six friends that she had told that concern to. So, and that's what I'm trying to drill down to, and I know it's been a while. And I, I'm not sure the days, the events, or when, or how. I just remember over the time I've heard her tell her friends that she was concerned about Clinton's involvement. So, so I get that you're making that big, broad statement. Now I'm trying to drill down into it, okay? And, and I don't remember exact times or dates or how. No one's asking you an exact time or date. I'm asking you, do you ever at any point in time recall hearing Dia say to Julie that she was concerned Clinton might cause her disappearance? Yeah. Do you recall at any point in time Dia saying to Julia yeah. that she had concerns Clinton might cause her disappearance? Yeah. Do you recall Dia ever saying to Jay that Dia had concerns Clinton might cause her disappearance? I knew, I knew that Jay knew. I don't remember her actually saying or heard her tell Jay anything. Okay, but other I knew than, that Jay knew. But, and how did you know that Jay knew? Jay has told me that. What did Jay tell you in that regard? Just that she had, that she had mentioned to him a concern for Clinton. So, okay, other than Julie and Julia, setting those two aside, did you ever personally hear Dia say to anyone else that she had a concern that Clinton might cause her disappearance? No, but I've, you know, I've known of other people who have mentioned that they knew. Uh, her real estate agent knew as well. I don't know when she was told, but she uh, confirms that as well. Who's that? Who's that? Star person? Evans. What did Star tell you about that topic? That that she had said it multiple times to her that she was concerned about Clinton. Okay. Star told you yes. that Dia, that Dia had told Star. Dia had yep. concerns Clinton would cause her disappearance. Yep. Did anyone else ever communicate to you that Dia had told them that? Not that I recall. Did I hear you say that part of the reason you were going to Colorado was related to this Clinton concern? Yeah. Was there any other reason why you were going to Colorado? No, for her safety. How long were you planning to be in Colorado? Good. I don't know if we had set a time frame. 
There was, Where a chance, there was a chance that she would be staying in Colorado or Farmington for a while until matters cleared up and she was less fearful of that a retaliation was in process. Retaliation from what? Her filing the trust. What do you mean by her that? Trust, her challenge of the trust. Some sort of legal proceeding concerning a trust? the trust that she had filed against the family trust. Do, do you know what trust that is, the family yeah. trust? Yeah, it's the ones that Clinton now supervises. But not Diaz trust. Not Diaz trust. So it was your understanding that this concern about Clinton flowed from some filing that Dia had made in connection with the family trust. Is that right? Correct. Do you know what Dia was seeking to accomplish through that filing? She was she was filing to challenge the trust that she was entitled to a portion of that trust because she had been married for 35 years to Clem. And she felt that Clinton was so upset about that that he was going to do something violent. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Did you ever reach out to Clinton to have a conversation about that? No, nope. but I had heard Clinton talk to her on several occasions. By phone, in person, or both? On phone. So, so you didn't reach out to Clinton to talk about this topic. Because you I talked to Clinton. Him. I talked to Clinton when he arrived at the search for the search for her about my concerns of what he, what, uh, why he, why she felt threatened about him. Is that the first time you had a conversation with Clinton on that Directly topic? With Clinton, yes. Why didn't you call him before the disappearance? You know, I, I I had only met Clinton on a couple of occasions. I didn't feel confident in discussing anything with Clinton. I mean, you're. I'm just trying to understand because we're talking about, based on your testimony, we're talking about a threat being made against your fiance that you took so seriously, you're going to leave the state with her, but you never actually reached out to the person that allegedly made the threat. And I'm just trying to understand why not. Oh. That was her son. I felt that that was a confidential issue between her and him. And no, I did not reach out to him until he actually arrived at a, on the ranch. And then I had a conversation with him. So am I, am I hearing correctly that you didn't reach out to Clinton because that was basically a family affair you were trying to stay out of? I didn't know him well enough to know what his intent was. I did not want to prejudge him when I did not know that much about Clinton. Do you know if Dia left any sort of note? She did. She left several notes. She was asked to sign notes saying that her life was being threatened. And she was asked to contact Riverside and give them the information that she was under threat. Who asked her to do that? I did for one. Um, um, Julia asked her. I know at least those two incidences. She said several notes. Do you have an estimate of how many? I don't know. I know that I know Riverside had collected some and I know Clinton turned one in while he was, the, the property was under his control. Did you actually find those notes around the house? I knew, I, I watched her write one of them. What did that one say, the one he watched her write? Her life was in danger. When did she first start writing the, those notes expressing that concern? Three weeks before she started to disappear. 
So in that three week period, do you have an estimate of how many notes that she wrote? I don't. More than five? I don't know. I would hope that Riverside has a contact that she would have made with them about the threat on her life. And when you asked her to go report her concerns or the threats to the authorities, what was her response back to you? She said that they wouldn't believe her, especially with her son involved. Did she ever express to you any concern about Isidro? No, she did not. That, would it be fair to say, Mr. Harper, that you are disappointed with the efforts made by the authorities? Without a question. I think they've been paid off, to be honest with you. Who do you think's paid them off? off? What's that? Who do you think's paid them off? I think Clinton paid them off. And do you have any... I don't uh, have any proof of that, but I think it'll come out in time. Did you and Dia ever discuss her wealth or her assets? No, not really. But you knew she owned a few properties, right? Well, obviously. I was with her for a number of years, obviously. Did you ever have, before she went missing, did you ever have any idea of her net worth? No. Didn't matter to me. Did you ever tell her anything about your net worth? I don't think it mattered to her. Yeah, no, and, that, and that's fine. I'm just trying to make sure you never actually had a conversation on that no, topic. I never had a conversation. It wasn't important. We didn't like each other because of our assets. At the before she went missing, did you know where she had her bank accounts? Uh, yes. We had a combined bank account. You had a joint account? Yes. Did you know whether she had a safe deposit box? Yes. You were aware that she had one? Yes. Was that a joint safe deposit box or just hers? Yes. It's a joint. Do you know what she, what she kept in that safe deposit box, if anything? Yes. What did she keep in there? Jewelry. Anything else? Um, we both have funds in there. Like physical cash? Yes. Where was that safe deposit box? Chase Bank. What branch? Uh, one on 111. Tom Depp. You know, do you have any other safe deposit boxes? She did not. Did she ever complain to you about having any sort of financial trouble? Having what? Any sort of financial trouble, difficulty, debts, anything she like that? She had extreme financial. Her son cut her off financially of every penny. She was codependent on that money that came. She was never allowed to work. Yes, she had financial issues. None of her properties were being paid for for well over six months. That was her son and her daughter that enforced that rule. When you say she was codependent on the money, what do you mean by that? The only money she had. She had no other. You know, if she ever had a job or any sort of yep. source of it? She worked part-time at a restaurant, but that was a short time. You know, if her properties were generating any rental income at the time she went missing? One property only. So it's your understanding that she was receiving approximately 15000 a month when they cut her off. When her, who cut her off? Clinton and Kassara. Cut her off from what? 
their financial support of her from the trust. She had a part interest in the marital trust and her husband funded her care of properties and provided an income for her. All that was taken away. Plus her truck, her only form of transportation. So it's your understanding that at some point Clinton and Chrisara took some action that resulted in Dia getting zero dollars from the trust? Yes, it's in writing. Filed by her attorneys. So it wasn't and just that. She would that. receive nothing coming forward. So it wasn't just that like a monthly distribution was being reduced. It was that literally the payments were going to go to zero. Is that right? Exactly. Did you assist Dia in any respect with that lawsuit that was going on over the trust? No. Did you ever review no, any of the strictly, pleadings? What's that? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, give me, give me that statement one more time. I was just going to ask, did you ever review any of the pleadings? The proceedings on it? Yes. What do you recall reading? the disputes that they were making against her. Did you have any discussions with her lawyer that was helping her with that case? Yes, Tara Bird, yes. Okay, let's go back on the record. Mr. Harper, I'm just gonna show you quickly the power of attorney document. So I'll mark as exhibit 12, a three page document that is a power of attorney. Have you seen this before? Yes. You've never had any discussions with Dia about this document, right? Nope. And you never saw this while she was, before she went missing, right? No, I didn't see that till after I was notified of being the power of attorney. Did Dia ever ask you at any point if you'd be willing to be named as a power of attorney? Nope. Okay, let me go to the next exhibit, 13. This is just a signature page from a petition does that look to be Dia's signature to you? For clarification, what's that? Uh, what's it attached to? Some petition filed in that trust case you've been talking about. The San Diego oh, case? the San Diego case? Right. All right. All right. But all, all I really want to know, and if you don't have an opinion, that's fine too, but I just want to know, does that yeah, look well, that, like? That, I've, seen, I've seen that signature before. Okay. That's not your signature, is it? No. Yeah, no. Have, have you ever signed Dia's name on any papers? Nope. Not without the power of attorney. Did Dia ever ask you to sign her name on any papers? No. Did you ever observe any sort of mental decline in Dia at any point? No. Probably one of the brightest women I've ever known. She didn't have any like memory issues or confusion? Never, sir. Not for a moment on her. In fact, she was probably as specific and directed as any woman I've ever been around. Wait till he finishes the question. Do you know if she was diagnosed with suffering from depression at any point? Nope. Do you know if she was on any prescription medications for depression? Not that I was ever aware of. For injuries to her back, yes. 
when did that back injury occur? Uh, it, it occurred a number of years. She lived with it for a number of years before she ever went into surgery. When did she have the surgery? Um, I missed that. Um, I think 2018. Where did she go in for that surgery? Uh, San Diego. Did she then have to stay at some sort of outpatient recovery clinic, something like that? She uh, had some real complications while she came out of surgery. Um, She, uh, when when she was recovering, the only person in the room was Clinton. And she believed that she was slept a drug by Clinton that was intended to take her life. And she went into a severe coma for three or four days before she actually came out. No one brought her. She had to have a neighbor bring her and a neighbor take her back home. She told you this uh, information about the drug being slipped? Yes. Did she report that to any authorities? She reported it to the doctor and she had been in a coma for three to four days and whatever test he said that would be administered, it would be probably out of her system by then. But she went you know she immediately ever, into a coma. Do you know if she ever reported that to any law enforcement? I don't know. What neighbor are you talking about that brought her there? I don't. She just said that she had to call a neighbor to take her to the hospital, that her own children were not available to help her. And uh, when it came time to release her, and, and it may have been Julia, but I don't remember for sure. I think picked her up and brought her home. So, do you know who took Thea in for the back surgery? I do not. If if Clinton were to say that he took her in for the back surgery, you would he dispute not, that? She told me that none of her children were available to take her in for back surgery. She had to have a neighbor take her, and only Clinton was in the recovery room. That's the only time she saw any family member. Why didn't you take her in for surgery? Because I wasn't in state at the time. Where were you? I was in New Mexico. What were you doing there? Building. How long did she stay? Well, we would draw that. From the time that she went in for the surgery to the time that she was able to come back home, how much time passed? Um, I think it was close to a week past before she was, a, it could have gone, because I know she went into a rehab center for a while, and I don't know how long that took. I know the initial surgery and the fact that she was in a coma was nearly a week by the time of her recovery and out of that, and then she went into a rehab center to make sure that she was capable of going home. I don't know how long that took. I don't remember. And you didn't go see her at all during that approximately one week period? I was under construction. When I'm in construction, I have to stay there until the construction is done. After that back surgery, she was prescribed prescription medication yeah. for pain? She was. Did she stay on that medication all the way up until when she went missing? She, I wouldn't say she took it regularly. She took it to avoid pain. I saw a number of her prescriptions that kind of stacked up because she would only take it only in severe pain would she take the prescription. When's the last time you recall her going to get a prescription filled for a pain medication? I watched it every month. What were the pain medications she was taking? Uh, I don't remember all of it.
did the medications ever seem to impact her cognitive functioning? She never took them enough to affect her cognitive thinking. She'd take it rarely. I don't remember Dia ever being impaired. She ever seemed groggy or tired from the nope. meds? No, nope. she had uh, she had migraines and she would lay down for an hour or two because of the migraines. That's the only thing I ever heard her complain about. And I, I asked you earlier, I think, about Sally Imel, and you didn't know who that was. Is that right? The name does not ring familiar. Not that I did not know her. It sounds like somebody that was in the Bunko game thing. And same thing with Ronnie Imel, that doesn't ring a bell? Um, there was uh, like a veteran deal that I think they were over. And I think we went there for a dinner at one time. But where for a dinner? At these people's house. That, that sounds familiar, but I don't remember. But if it was, he was in charge of veterans uh, association. Some sort of veterans association? That's correct. And you think you think you may have gone to dinner at the Imel's residence Maybe. one time? I don't know. I can't say that for sure. I do not know the name. I'm assuming it's it's a familiar name. I just don't know how it relates. Are you still in contact with all of your children? Yes. Have you discussed with your children the nature of this lawsuit? Yes. Have you discussed with your children? Yeah, well, let me withdraw that. Have you discussed with any of your children Dia's wishes with respect to how her assets would pass upon death? I don't think that's ever come up. 